Hi, everybody. This is the speak session with my first group of women. I'm so excited. Five people joining me here today in my isolation. So I'm grateful to you all. I feel like the happiest person. Daytime is great for me. Evening is frightening. So thank you for um, coming into my um, little haven of isolation where I'm healing from coronavirus. That's a separate issue. That's really not because it's sort of what we're talking about today. I am so excited because there's nothing I love more than bringing women together who are in their purpose because when you are in your purpose, fear has no access. And today we are all struggling with fear, every single one of us, from the leaders to, and everyone, you know, from, from beginning to end, we're all having fears, no matter what. And I think each and every one of you has a platform that is so beautiful. I find that you are bold and creative and spiritual and a little rebellious. And I think you've all designed your platforms that way. So I'm gonna quickly introduce you guys. And really what today is just about is we find ourselves in these extraordinary times that have never happened before. And how are you using your platform to help yourself, help others, and what do you see beyond this? So first I'm gonna say hello to Barry Liner Grant, who uh, is a dear friend and um, is the, Oh, the beautiful founder of something called The Memory Circle, which helps us grieve as a community, which is beautiful. Emily Mackey, who is a designer of Inspired Interiors, who is a dear friend also, and who um, is just living, she, well, she inspires beautiful interiors to surround you in your beautiful life. And uh, you're so talented and you are um, so brave as a single mom who is taking advantage of making sure this moment is meaningful for your kids, which we'll talk about. Shelly Paxton, author of Soulbatical, my new favorite book, a, a corporate rebel's guide to finding your best life. And I'm pretty sure Shelly wrote this book for, she must have some insider scoop because this book is what we all need right now because I feel like we're on a Soulbatical. Cheryl Jackson, who is a global leader in so many, so many things, so many businesses, um, president of AAR, but also founder of Grit and Grace because we all, well, she's founder of Grit and Grace, but right now, again, we all need grace, we all need grit. Her TED talk, uh, TEDx talk says something that I hope you'll bring up about going small it's so pertinent and my new friend who i haven't met yet but only on instagram stephanie wheat who is the designer of rebellion bags my favorite bag uh, beautiful handbag line too she's um also i think a single mom are you a single mom stephanie and you are bold and rebellious you're sort of like trying to figure out what's next and you um and, and I'll just say that Stephanie and I did our first barter deal. She's sending me a bag and I'm sending her 10 books to her 10 best friends. So I, I think that's what it's all about. Women supporting women. Yeah. And I'm just going to start with you, Cheryl. Um, how are you using your platform right now? I know you're in Memphis. You're not in Chicago. Let us know where you are when you speak uh, to this. But how are you using your platform right now to help others? First, Sally, thank you so much for bringing us all together. It's um, it's, it's it's a mass therapy session, so uh, yeah, yeah. thank you for that. Um, my platform of grit and grace. It's it's really about um, and for women, and maybe not not even just women, but people who are fighters. You know, that's your baseline. That's your normal. You you your every day is about a fight, a fight to succeed or a fight to help someone else. And that's all that you really know. And so our grit muscle, our fight muscle is so overdeveloped that we um, really don't know how to offer ourselves grace and we don't know the power of offering ourselves grace. So how am I using this platform in the age of the Rona? Um, <laughs> the Rona. Uh, I'm first using it on myself. I have not been out there posting and blogging and micro blogging and I'm, I left Chicago um, on a whim, like within 24 hours, decided to uproot, move uh, or just come to Memphis where my mother, my 82 year old mother uh, lives to shelter in place with her so that she wouldn't be so uh, isolated. Um, so I uprooted my life. I'm 
started a new business and I, I just, at the end of last year, um, retired or resigned from my AER gig to focus my full time on grit and grace. Okay. So here I am starting a new business in the middle of uh, a pandemic and, um, you know, a great depression, you know, 2.0. So <laughs> I, that, that's a lot to take in. And so I decided to, you know, let me practice, offer myself grace. Um, doesn't mean that I'll stay here. Uh, but it does mean I'm looking at what I need at a soul level um, in this moment. Uh, and, but I am. Yeah, and so you're kind of on a soul sabbatical, right? I am on a soul sabbatical. <laughs> but how I plan to use my, my platform, I'm launching a, uh, because this whole message, my, what inspired this was a talk I gave. And in the talk, um, I talked about uh, the TED Talk that, you know, we're so accustomed to these big lives of, busyness and doing things both great and small and purposeful or not we're just really busy busy a lot pulling on our time um so there comes a time in life that you have your world has to go small you have to still yourself you have to disconnect yourself from things in order to heal yourself at a soul level um in order to you know, really go in and plug into power within. And then you can go big again and go big again and better. So, um, so I'll be talking about that. Um, I'm going to do a, um, an eye conference, a digital conference on um, how it's called, it's gonna be called Pivot. Um, and it's how to uh, plan and plot for life post pandemic. And okay. um, and using oh. lots of grace. We got that grit, uh, but pairing grace with our grit to, um, to get through and not just survive, but thrive. So, so I first put the oxygen mask on myself and now I am ready to um, share this message with others. And when can we find that? When will that happen? That, uh, I'm going to launch it uh, next week, uh, but it'll be May 19th. And it's going to be an all day conference, multiple, it is going to there. be an experience. Yes, you will be there. I'll see you there. Listen, I think it's so cool that um, I, I spoke with Shelly last week. I spoke with you two weeks ago, Cheryl, and, and Shelly and I both launched a new book, First Time Authors, brand, you know, brand new books, first you know, right out of the gate. And then we, we got a month in and then boom, it, it ended. So everyone's in this pivot, like you said. But I think what's so cool is that you say that it's – don't feel the need, even if you have a platform, to be posting and this and that and figure out what's next. Really, really stay quiet and understand that you're going to find where your fit will go. And that's okay. Right. <laughs> that is, um, you know, I, you, you were talking just a moment about fear. And I came across this quote from um, Gary Zuvkot. Yes, Zuvkot. Oh, right. Gary yes, Zuvkot. My you know that because my your girl, Oprah, he's right? Book. He's in my book. That's I right. Wear purple with him. <laughs> he's awesome. But this one quote from his book was just like eye-opening. And it says, awesome. when fear ceases to scare you, it cannot stay. Yes. Woo. Yes. That is a yes. word. That one sentence just is life-changing. He also says something about, and I write about this, when, you're, when your personality serves your soul yes that's when you have real purpose that's okay. right okay go go shelly <laughs> shelly that talk. was me saying hallelujah to those it's, words see what the know. soul is so amazing so oh my tell gosh us, tell us what coming from what cheryl's doing and your platform and how how this is all working in your pandemic era well, yeah, and what she said, right? Cheryl, that was amazing. Thank you for sharing so we eloquently. We so off of each other, so vibe off of each other. I know, I know, I know. Um, so Sally Lou, like you said at the beginning, so first of all, thank you for inviting all of us. I love that I have all these new, said, yes. new rebel friends. Um, and yeah, I, I really do believe the world, like this pause in the world is a sabbatical right now. This is a chance for all of us to slow down and to really get in touch with ourselves and to ask ourselves some tough questions, right? What does it look like to live and lead more authentically, more courageously, 
more purposefully. And I view this time, so, you know, so I wrote the book. So for anybody who's looking for a workbook right now in the middle of this pandemic, you go, I actually have a copy of it right next oh, to me. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I got it. Yeah, I made sure I have a stack next to me. But seriously, this is not, this is literally not meant to be a plug for the book. It's meant it to be, be like, I'm obsessed. I love it so much. I'm this, ready. oh, thank you so much. This is, but it's part memoir, part manifesto, part interactive guide. And I think the interactive guide piece is what's so crucial right now, because you're following me on my story, but it's meant to then kind of turn the mirror and be a reflection for each one of us to ask ourselves the same questions. And you guys, we didn't know each other. We we met through a mutual friend and my book is exactly the same, a different message, but the same like memoir, uh, not really manifesto, but more memoir. And like I always say, like the Oprah Winfrey show, warm up, it was participatory. I used the audience, that was, that was the key to it. And so by the end of my book, you have a start to your own story because each, each chapter has a prompt. So your lessons I haven't gotten to yet because I'm not there yet, but I, love that part because we are all in this together, right? That's exactly right. And also now, so I've been, I mean, I think I said this to you when we were chatting last week, it's like quarantine or sabbatical. And maybe it's actually quarantine and sabbatical, it right? Is. It's it's both because we have this time. So I've been saying three things. So just to answer the question, like, how am I using my platform right now? I've been saying three things. One is use this time to find your own signal, like to find your soul signal, exactly like Cheryl was saying, like reground because stability comes from the inside out. So reground in that signal because there is so much noise going on outside right now. And it's like, we've got to block that out. The fear, the frenetic energy, the noise, like find your signal because it's inside of you. So and I think that signal, signal, I would say is the same as purpose, right? Signals the same as purpose. And it's, it's honestly like the starting point is just reconnecting with that little voice inside of us because Cheryl talked about busyness. And that's one of the things that I talk about all the time. Like we are a culture that's addicted to busyness and we're constantly in motion. So we're not slowing down. And most of us, and this was my story, have lost touch with that little voice. We don't even know we're not listening to it. We don't know what it's telling us. So check back in. And then use this as an opportunity. I say lean into boredom because anyone who says they're bored, I'm like, well, I got some work for you to do. <laughs> right. Like, right. You know, really like ask yourself some questions and do a bit of a life audit because I think the best thing we can, well, two things I think we can do is one, determine how we want to consciously grow through this. I mean, every crisis is here to teach us some sort of lesson to help us take something out of it. There is a gift, there is a silver lining. So what is it for each one of us? And now is the perfect time to be asking those questions, right? And, and so ask yourself, what then as you kind of do that audit, like what do you want to come out of this? What do you want to be different in your life? How do you want to create your life on the other side of this pandemic? And to I me, that's a huge that. opportunity. I'm going to ask you all that. So know that uh, that's that when we go to our lightning round questions, it's going to be <laughs> <laughs> what you're next, Barry, Barry. I have to call her Barry because she's New Jersey. I'm, I'm in New Jersey. Um, you know, what can you live without now that you've lived without it? What can't you live without? Um, what, um, oh, Grace, enter Grace, my dog, Grace. Um, <laughs> And how is your life going to shift when this pandemic is, is over? And one more thing, what, have you, what skill have you picked up or are you trying to pick up in this pause? All right. Thank you. Thank you, Shelly. We'll be back to you. But Barry, I'm coming to you next. Tell us about your platform, which is so beautiful. And in this moment, we're losing people more than ever. I think we're uh, in a, kind of a universal state of grief and I got real quiet in all of my other work I've been an author I've had my own public relations firm and something in me it was a stylist and writer for the Tribune like all these jobs that were like go 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 and moved here from New York and had to be a lot of things there was a reporter the gym. Like, I feel like I've been every job you can be and at one point I went and got my um 
yoga teacher training, like took a, a passion project. And just for me, like next step, like never teaching, never teaching, never teaching. That was me just here for like the making my practice more deep or whatever. And the meditation portion, we had to meditate every day for 30 minutes as part of the training from September to December. This was years back. And when I got quiet, it was so stirring and it was so um, eye-opening that the things that came to me, a lot of people think when we meditate, I don't know how many of you have a practice, but people think when we meditate that we have to remove, remove our thoughts. But really what we're doing is clearing space so that we can actually um, take notice of what, what is coming up for us. And, and in those beginning weeks, I started writing things down. And a lot of them because they were spinning. And so I wanted to like put them somewhere so that they, they would stop. This wasn't part of the training. We were just supposed to be with those. But in order for me to be able to sit with any regularity, I needed to jot them down. And I realized that a lot of them were worries, and a lot of them were fears, and a lot of them were things that were recurring. And when I found a place for them to be, I found that I could get very quiet and um, resourceful. You know, then things started to grow right. that felt creative. So anyway, from, from all of that came um, setting an intention um, called a sankalpa, um, which is a little bit different than setting a resolution at the new year, but something that has like a, almost like a mini sabbatical, if you will. <laughs> you set a time frame for it between six months and 18 months for something to come to fruition that's in your purpose. And I went to a workshop and nothing really came and I was driving home and I was almost pissed because everybody else was sort of spewing theirs and I didn't really have one. And then I thought, oh, I will create a uh, class at Mother's Day for women who have lost their moms. I lost my mom in 1993 and never really uh, shared a whole lot about it because I felt like that sad piece was not exactly something that um, made me the life of the party. You know, it made me the sad girl in the room. What I came to realize was we needed a grief spokesperson. We needed a grief spotter among us. And I grew this circle of these women to include everybody that was experiencing grief into the memory circle. And it is really events where we sit shoulder to shoulder um, and invite in other experts because I, I am not a doctor, but I have come to realize that what does come from processing grief and processing loss and being in community with it and changing the vernacular around loss um, is that we see that we're more alike than we are different that we give each other permission to talk about things that are verboten um, in our, uh, not just in, in community, but in the US, I mean, in our country, we're just, we're really not good at it. We're great at celebrations and we're not really good at- um, you, You've even said that we need to lean into death and really talk about it. Yes, yes. I mean, it's gonna happen to us all. And as I think the, the discomfort of what many of us are feeling right now is that if we've experienced grief, we're feeling it again, kind of a resurgence. If we have had um, a feeling of things that we've lost, normalcy, you know, we've kind of had this, this anticipatory loss, um, you know, what, what we feel like we've lost in our day-to-day -day life, freedom, all of these things. But what we're not doing is processing this. So we're busying ourselves with other things and, a, and an exercise class a minute and a Zoom class a minute. And I, like the other women say, get quiet, go in. This is, um, this is the theme, this is the theme. It really, it, it really is. I mean, for me it had been, and, uh, but you know, uh, up until now it was really changing what I did to something that from, from very out there to, to something that was very quiet. But the memory circles include everything from, um, movement, like including yoga and meditation, but also writing exercises, inviting in mediums, um, getting in touch with your intuition, all ways that we can learn and share to process grief and loss. And people who have showed up in this circle are not just people who have experienced the loss of a loved one. People have shown up who have experienced the loss of, who have experienced the loss of a job. Um, 
loss in every way. And when we come in community and we are able to share, we're able to tell our story, if you will, Sally Lou, um, we see this camaraderie, we see the sameness among us, we see community, we, and then we seek community. And it, it has warmed my heart to no end. Um, I'm having a, the first virtual, um, tomorrow night actually, the first virtual- I don't, the I don't have the link yet. Send I'll me the link. You. Okay. The first virtual um, memory circle, um, which was lovely because I've only done them in New York and Chicago because they've been in person. And what's so nice now is that we're able to invite people from all over the world. So this really taught me a lesson. We talk about learning something new and pivoting. Totally. You know, Zoom invited the party. <laughs> Listen, so, Zoom and TikTok and Amazon are going exactly. to okay. <laughs> So tomorrow evening, um, we'll, Heidi Bailey Medium is joining me and Nora Barton, who's a cellist for um, a guided uh, meditation through music, through sound. So where can people find you? Memorycircle.com, at the Memory Circle. Wow. Links in the down bar. <laughs> Links in the down bar. I'm, I'm, I, listen, in this, in this pause, we've all learned so many new things. I know I have learned so much uh, technology. I'm not, I, I don't love it. It does not love me, but I'm trying. So listen, the fact that we're all hearing each other and I can see you and the lip sync is not that bad. I just hope we got HD today. Cheryl, when I did our call, we got HD and you look like you're in HD and I don't. So I'm confused by this. I want to know your Zoom hookup, Cheryl, but invite Cheryl to all your Zooms because we get HD. <laughs> okay. Thank you, Barry. I'm going to just quickly go, Emily, I'm going to end with you, but I'm going to go to Stephanie real quick. Um, the, the designer of Rebellion Bags. Tell us, uh, Stephanie, how you're feeling in this moment and how your platform is serving others. Hi, ladies. So um, thank you so much for inviting me. Um, I just feel like I'm in a group of really what seems to be my soul sisters. I'm like so excited about hearing about all of your stories. Barry, I think that you and I have um, quite a lot in common, more than the fact that we have an orchid in the background of our, our photo. But um, I, I um, essentially had decided um, the beginning of this year to go low. So I had decided to make some changes in my business. For the past three years, I have been like a hamster running on a wheel and just about killing myself. I was traveling last year, I did 30 shows. I travel and set up at trade shows, selling my handbags both um, as whole, you know, wholesale accounts and to uh, customers directly. And so at any rate, I decided that I was going to shut down my studio and go to all contractors. So I, all of my employees got jobs or they came on as peace workers and I just, um, moved out of my studio in February, and it was my intention to go low. So I had scheduled um, two days a week where I was having a date night with myself. Um, I was having two days a week of studying. I started Marie Forleo's B School. I had just okay. finished. Who else did that? Wait, uh, you did it, but wait, did Shelly, did you do Marie Forleo's? Okay, just, okay, Stephanie. So started that. I'm in week five of that now. Um, I had just finished the SBA's Emerging Leaders Program. Um, and so I was really just going about trying to figure out what I wanted to do um, and shifting my, my focus from being so big and doing international shows and, and instead kind of just going small and trying to find my customer directly. And then in, the, um, in addition to that, I am a yoga teacher as well. I've, I haven't taught in 10 years until I started teaching just during this pandemic, which is another story, but- Me too, um, me too, me too. Yes, yes. Again, yes. so good. Use your talents. We all benefit. We all benefit when we use them. Yeah, absolutely. So at any rate, I already felt like, wow, I was already planning to do this, and now the whole world is doing it with me. Um, what I've been doing in this time, essentially, is I've been trying to help other people because what I did is I, I sat here in my home and thought, you know, I'm a single mom. I've got a 17-year-old son who's just been accepted to college um, just got a full ride, gave me the gift of my life. Like I never expected that. Oh, um, got awesome. Great. A round of applause, everybody. Everybody. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> so, job, Mom. so at any rate, I sat here in my home and I have looked out over my balcony and seen um, forever this area, which is a garden. It's a community garden um, that I had a garden plot at several years ago when I had the time to actually garden. And 
um, between that garden plot, city lights is what it's called, and my home are single family homes that are several million dollars. And then there's the Cabrini Green low income housing that is still there, the townhomes. And there's just such a disparity. And I have always looked out that window. And during my yoga teacher training, I did the 30 minutes of meditation at Yoga View, did the level two there. And um, every day I would sit and meditate and it just came to me that, you know, there was something I'm supposed to do to help to bridge that gap. And so why is it that I'm up here in this high rise um, living the life that I'm living while other single moms are struggling and not able to put food in the cupboards? So fast forward 10 years and here we are in the middle of a pandemic and I'm feeling the same feeling things thinking I really haven't done enough for that community so I started a fundraiser giving um, proceeds of any sales that I made for about 10 days to that community and then I pledged a year of 10% of the proceeds of my sales of my profits to City Lights so that I would do something to help others and so I thought that's something that's some place to start but I really want to help individuals and as an artist with all of these shows that I've been doing I know hundreds of different artists and I travel I call them my circus family so <laughs> hey, last, who doesn't have a circus family I'm sorry don't we yeah, all yes yes I so um, I decided that I was going to help my artist friends uh, get their gifts online you know get get their art online so that they could actually make some money and start selling um, because we're sort of the people that have fallen through the cracks. And I wasn't afraid for me because I am resilient. I'm a chameleon. I can change um, what I do. I've done that my entire life. And when I was thinking about this and I reread the question just briefly before getting on this um, Zoom call, I thought to myself, you know, and I'd never thought about it in this way, but in one year when I was in my 30s, early 30s, I had in the course of one year, I had a stroke that I recovered from. I had, um, I was, I was a commercial pilot. I still am. I just am not. Um, my ratings are not current, but I crash landed an airplane and survived it. I had, I got pregnant and I was suddenly single. I moved across the country and I wish started. you could show all of our faces because they all. Oh, that's funny. <laughs> oh my God. Right. That's <laughs> insane. Insane. I'm so enjoying all of these stories. It's amazing. Okay. And we're all like this. <laughs> oh, that's so funny. That is so funny. I can't wait to rewatch that. Well, so at any rate, I just realized, you know, that I really am confident that I'm going to come through this okay and that we're going to come through this okay, um, you know, but I am so concerned about other people. Yeah. So how can I be of help? So 2 p.m. every day is my time to help others. Okay. And I'm just I'm doing it. We're able to do this today. I love that, that you schedule it. Yeah, it's just in it's my it's scheduled, um, and I'm just putting people into the time slots, and I'm trying to become more creative, like you, Sally Lou. I'm not great with technology, but I'll figure it out. We'll figure it out. It's not anything that difficult, and um, so I'm trying to put together some coursework that I can actually give to people for free to help them with just figuring out social media, figuring out how to, um, you know, create an email um, blast, a newsletter. Well, you're helping your circus family. Yes, I'm helping my circus family and my friends. So on Facebook, I'm doing hot yoga as well. So I'm going in. I'm helping me first by going quiet. So when I wake up in the morning, I do not touch any of my electronics. I do not do anything. I don't bring the outside world in until I've gone inside. So I go do my meditation. I do hot yoga in my bathroom, which I've converted. And it's amazing. It gets to 106 degrees. Um, I do my yoga. And then I come out and I face the world. That's good. And you're feeling good. I do, feeling I'm good. feeling great. And I do that at the end of the night. So um, I'm not really paying a lot of attention to what's happening in the world. I have people, I haven't watched television um, other than movies, Netflix, things that I choose to watch. I haven't watched the news or read a newspaper in 25 years. So people have to contact me when something goes wrong. So feel free to let me know if anything is going to be. That's, that's the best way to go inside is to not read anything or listen. Yeah. Well, I'm, I'm inspired. I know we all are. And I mean, the fact that you crash landed a plane, you can fly a plane, you survived and, um, and, and you're in your thinking about how you can help others is, is a beautiful story. So thank you. We can, all, we can all help others. And I think it's just something that everyone can do yeah. in some one way or another. I think um, yeah, I think when you use your talents, that's it. When you use your talents, 
that is how, you know, we can't all do the same thing. And that's why we are humans and all of us are so different. And whatever your talent is, that is what your talent is. That's what you can give the world. And um, that's, we've all, we've all said that right here. Um, Emily, your talent is so wonderful and inspiring people to live within um, a home that lifts them up. Barry understands that as well. Um, but what I think is so cool about you too is you're a single mom of three and you are absolutely taking adventures every year uh, with your children. You do things that are brave. And in this moment, you're treating this, I think, this pandemic, um, I mean, the name of your company is Inspired Interior. So everything that you do is comes from being inspired. And so you are, tell us about what you're doing. Thanks. I, so I think um, a lot of my inspiration draws from uh, my childhood and, and my father and my background. My dad was really big on um, building these sort of surprise uh, carving out moment spaces in our home from like taking out part of our kitchen and putting in a, a 12 spigot soda fountain and converting our basement to like a video arcade and converting our dining room into like home for three paw parrots and you know <laughs> this is literally what you do so and I'm just going to say it because I said it to Shelly last week. I love women who have strong relationships with their dads. I know yeah. Barry does. Sure. Yeah. And uh, I was definitely daddy's little girl. Da always daddy's little girl. And, and he always was creating these wild moments um, throughout my childhood that were uh, just off. Everything was off the charts. You know, so many things had to be off the charts. And it was so great. Um and then I, I always talk about my life as um, when I was 17, 18 years old, he was indicted and um, went to prison for 10, 10 years. Your father? Yeah. And I, from the time I was 20, 17 to 27, my relationship with my father was um, sitting at a cement picnic table in federal penitentiary in Pensacola, Florida. And a lot of my young um womanhood adulthood was trying to um it's almost like when you watch the movie life is beautiful and you know how the father was just trying to get the little boy to focus on this just these little small moments and forget about everything else going around you and um my dad did that when we would sit there at those concrete picnic tables he would get me to focus on just these little tiny things and not everything else around you and um it taught me to carve out what you want your life to look like. And it taught me that you have absolute control over so many things. And if you just really grab on to um, what you want to believe and hone in on it, uh, you can do it. And it's, it's something that we're all capable of is just how much you choose to focus on it and grab onto it. That's, that's the key. Um, but I think I, for me, um, the stories that you know are me uh, as a single I didn't mom. know that story. I'm in, still in talk. <laughs> so I, uh, I, I've grown a business for 16 years of interior design and designed uh, lots of clients' homes. And I'm known for carving out these similar kinds of moments in clients' homes. And I, I take great pride in um, telling them there's like a handing over the keys moment is what I describe it as, where they just hand over the keys and I take control of their home and I carve out all these different little moments in different spaces in their home and, and have fun with it. And I love the feedback later on. The reward for me is uh, going back to photograph their home and hearing that they're living in all these ways in their home, more romantically in their bedroom or reading books on Sunday morning with their kids in a, in a sunroom or all these little moments that you sit there and you think that child's going to grow up and remember that. And I helped build that. I helped make that. I made sure that happened in that space. And so I feel like that's, um, such a special role to have and I feel really privileged to um, create those things for all of those clients and I, I feel like I push the limits for them to make sure that they capture those because people get um, fairly bogged down in different things and they forget to carve out time for themselves and carve out time for romance and love and intimacy and all those things and pause and pause 
right have time to pause listen i have a lot of questions about your dad but we'll do that another time but here is and your relationship with your dad not about your dad but i want to know about your relationship but right now what i really want to know um and i think this is very helpful to others um as a mom a single mom of three beautiful children i know them all they're beautiful and um you are doing an amazing job uh and so my question is when you found out about this shelter in place you what what happened you because you're in south Wait. carolina right now well we actually came back when i first heard about it and i really started adding everything up how everyone was sheltering in place and what that looked like and what all it entailed and i just thought you know it kind of um i don't want my kids to see that moment of us just looking at the same walls for an extended period of time and i want them to see something else and I just, I've no, I'm known for going on all these road trips. I've road tripped alone with all three of my kids throughout all 50 states in the United States. How cool is that? Alaska so and Hawaii. And I've got years, years of photographs of them uh, growing up and, and whether it's in a Winnebago or a minivan or all over the United States. Um, and they know the drill when we go on these road trips. So I guess when I first heard about it, I thought, let's get in the car and let's go somewhere that has fewer people, um, a lot more safety and is a little bit more isolated. And maybe that's the Texas girl in me, you know, growing up thinking, <laughs> get away from the masses. So I found a small uh, beach house for rent and I negotiated with the owner on VRBO and got, um, a quiet little beach house with a backyard as a beach and just drove there drove straight 14 and a half hours and luckily at this point i'm a you know a complete rebel on the road and the kids know the fire drill through uh state to state to state and and i pack up their little snacks next to their seat and we go it's it's a routine it's part of our lives at this point and that was my go-to was how do i find something remote and safe and how do the kids remember this you know emotionally i feel like there's something to be said for um my kids will remember mom making sure to haul ass to the beach and spend you know <laughs> three weeks with sunshine and fresh air in a backyard of an ocean um which which I made sure to carve out and, and own for us and took a lot of risk getting there. But uh, I'm sure you did. And it's a beautiful message. And there are a lot of moms that hopefully will watch this that wouldn't be brave because it's scary. I wouldn't be brave to do that. And they also don't, you know, whatever the, I'm sure you negotiated a good price, but they don't have the option to leave their home. They have to stay in their home. But I think the message is whether you um, can go to a beach or not go to a beach is that how are you going to make this moment memorable and take and remove fear right right and i always call it i i refer to it as a flipping the switch moment um and i describe it to people as when you you can take the ugliest possible thing in life uh emotionally business-wise uh children divorce death you can take the ugliest possible moment and if you look completely the opposite direction 180 degrees and say how do i make this beautiful because it might be ugly right now but i can totally flip the switch and make it beautiful and if you aim all your energy towards that beauty you'll get it and i call it flipping the switch um and i do it not only with homes but with moments and if you just flip the switch. I want to hear what everybody calls it. I'm going to start. I call it love. Barry, what do you call it? I, I'm always, I'm always like painting the picture of where we, where we live, like what, it, what it looks like around us. How can we, you know, even the way that I'm serving food, I feel like with intention, you know, just like doing everything so that it, it feels a certain way. Yeah. Shelly, what do you call it? The words that came up for me were choice and intention. Yeah. You guys, do you believe, do you think Shelly is Brene Brown? I, 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 every time I look at her, I think she's Brene Brown. I'm like, hi Brene, I love you Shelly. And she speaks and it's like, I love it. I'm like, hi Brene. Because we look nothing alike. <laughs> <laughs> the way you speak and what you say and that I really, really like you. Um, That's such a compliment, thank you. Stephanie. Uh, so, 
um, I guess I, I think of it in terms of just uh, being able to create and manifest things through our thoughts. And if you are in a really desperate situation, it's really hard to train your mind to not be focused on that. But having the ability to look for something positive has always been my, um, my gift in being able to shift what I'm in into something new. Beautiful. I don't know what I call it. Manifestation. Manifestation. Cheryl, what's, what are your words? You know, I was thinking about that uh, the other day. I, I came up with a title, the theme for this conference I'm doing, online conference, and it's Pivot. And I said to myself, you know, I'm, I'm the PhD in Pivot. I have a PhD in Pivot. I know how to pivot. But really what that is um, at its most essence is that I... Um, when you practice grace, when you offer yourself grace, and so you're, you're practicing grace, you hit the pause button, you're giving yourself some bandwidth to not just restore and reflect, but from that process of pausing, you know, restoration and rest um, and, and, and reflecting and reflection comes perspective. And with re new and regained perspective, you're able to pivot and shift. Um, and so that for me is, has always been something that stuck with me, like I can shift. Um, now I'm, I didn't know why, but now I know intentionally when I'm feeling, you know, really uh, unsettled, uncertainty, I know now that's a red flag to go in. And so- um, I said, holy shift. Yes. <laughs> Holy shift. Holy That's shift. funny. <laughs> I, love it. I mean, listen, I look like I'm totally fine. And this is my time between 11 and 4. Come 5 o'clock, I start taking the Corona dip and I start like it's a whole different world for me. And from like 5 o'clock till 530 in the morning, it's rough waters. And then it gets like so to somewhat better in the morning and then I'm like I'm good right now it's the weirdest freaking virus ever uh, it's such a weird you think you're over it and then you're not but anyway okay. I'm sorry I missed something I I, have, I I am I am I tested positive for coronavirus I'm in day nine of uh, quarantine of isolation yeah yes your heart I know and I knew it was coming because I felt it and I went I finally got tested and I'm in New Jersey so it's not like I have doctors here, but we worked it out. I'm in isolation. It is, it doesn't suck. Trust me. I'm in my sister's beautiful home. She's not here. My family comes and brings me uh, beautiful gifts of food and um, Pedialyte. I have been sucking down Pedialyte, um, all kinds of herbal old school teas that they make with rum and aloe and um, and I've been doing my breathing exercises uh, from Dr. Mushi from Queens um, Hospital, amazing video. Chris Cuomo is my superhero. You're um, a badass, Sally Lou. I'm oh, a badass. Man. I will tell you, I get to walk. My isolation is I get to walk outside. So I get to actually walk around. And that's the key to all of this. You have to walk and keep moving. If you lie down, you'll not, you will not get better at fast because this is a haul. It is taking a long time to get better. But you, when you lie down, you're on your lungs and you, it's a whole respiratory thing and you need to get better. I am so much better than I was. I've been sick for 11 days now, isolation for nine. Um, and I thought I was better the other day. And then last night I got worse or just it dipped again. And then we had a rainstorm, a, a torrential thunder and lightning rainstorm. I, I'll just say this. My family texted me. I'm not in the same house as them. There are enormous trees everywhere. We've been through Sandy. We've had loss of life here in Princeton from Sandy, from trees. So I am in this, this little barn by myself and my family is talking me through it. My daughter, who's also sick um, and is also isolating, called me. We did the, mist, the Dr. Mushi breathing exercises together. And then you lay down on your on your on your front, you lay down. So I laid down on the cushions and you're supposed to do it for 10 minutes. And for those 10 minutes, we exchanged giving light to someone in our family. So we named them and then we sent them light. We named them, we sent them light. And my breathing, I mean, put anxiety. I was shaking. I was, I couldn't breathe. 
um, put anxiety with coronavirus and you're done. So she, my daughter completely helped me last night. Mm. And um, I will say, if, you, if anyone watching this has coronavirus, the most important things are rest, obviously, hydrate, warm liquid, breathing exercises that Dr. Mushi from Queens Hospital does. Vitamin D, Get, right? Say it. Vitamin D. Getting out vitamin D, vitamin C, zinc, and walk around. If you can't get outside, at least walk around where you're isolated because it is the key to getting through this. So I, I guess I'm being a, a, a rebel right now trying to, to, trying to get through this. So listen, I went running on the morning I got sick. That night I got sick. So it's the weirdest virus. I, I don't even understand it. So, so that must have happened right after we spoke. It did. It did, Cheryl. It did. I spoke to Shelly when I was sick, but I spoke to you before I was sick. So yeah, it, it's, it's a weird, weird virus. And uh, it's a beast. Like Chris Cuomo says, it is a beast. It is, I have had, sick, I, I slept two hours last night. I haven't slept. I slept one night in the nine days I'm in here, but I haven't slept. And so I'm, I'm tired, um, but I'm, I'm, I can't wait for the hugs. I can't wait for the hugs. I'm really excited. Oh well, I'm sending God. you a virtual mm. hug. Yeah, virtual yeah. hug, everybody. Yeah. Virtual <laughs> hug. You know, put your arms around yourself, sister. Oh, yes, thank mm -hmm. you. Yay, everybody. Oh, my God. <laughs> That's so nice. Listen, <laughs> I will say one thing, and then I'm going to ask you the lightning round questions. Um, just before this happened, I was host, I was uh, moderating um, a beautiful new friend of mine, Laura Munson's book launch, another new friend of mine, author, best, she's a New York Times bestselling author, Laura Munson, and she wrote a book called Willa's Grove. It's fiction, but it is about a woman who, in, who's going through a really hard time in life, a loss of her husband, a lot of things has to sell her ranch in Montana. And she reaches out to a girlfriend who says, I'm coming to help you. And she's like, no, no, no. And she go, and the friend says, not only am I coming to help you, I'm gonna invite a friend who you don't know. And that friend is gonna invite a friend. And so the four women come together and they all have a link to each other, but not as a group. And I will, I, I've been reading that and sabbatical at the same time. But I wanna say, I said this when I invited you guys, I have sisters, I have sister-in-laws, I have best friends, but there's something about women coming together who don't necessarily have a history, but have a purpose. And I wanna thank you guys for today because I'm getting emotional because you've really helped me a lot because I, I know some of you were like, you should cancel. And I'm like, no, I don't wanna cancel. I would cancel if I couldn't do it, but I, I can't get you sick. And, and so that's good. Um, but I, it really warms my heart. I started this, like, I felt like it was my birthday, just seeing all your faces. You each well, with Stephanie, we're, we're new friends. So now we know each other, but you've each really made a, a mark on me. And some of you I've known long and some of you I've not known that long at all. Um, and I, and I, I just want to say thank you for your time and your message. Your messages are all on point. I know everybody give mm. hearts, hearts, hearts. <laughs> so love you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, ready? I'm going to start with you, Barry. The one thing you can absolutely live without post-corona, you discovered that you don't need to do it anymore. Well, this sounds really cheesy, but my husband's home from work, work from home. He works in New York. Yes. We don't think we'll go back. Oh, interesting. Uh -huh. So you found that it works, oh that he doesn't have to be there. No, he has to be here. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Sure. Okay, I like it. What can you live without uh, post-corona, um, Shelly? What I can live without is busyness. I'm oh, done. Good question. I mean, good Physici answer. <laughs> good answer. <laughs> Physician, good heal answer. thyself. <laughs> good answer. I have, to an I have to answer. I can't even think. Okay. Um, Emily, what can you live without? Dating apps. Oh. <laughs> Tell us more. Well, I think I just... Um, I, I've been single for five, almost six years ish. And I just, th I, I haven't participated in them for a while, but I definitely think it's just, there's so much else to focus on. I'm interested in so many other things. Yeah. And um, it'll come when it's supposed to. 
Yeah. And there, there's so many beautiful things happening that I'd rather focus on right now and make a priority. I love that. Stephanie, what can you live without? Um, I, I think I could live without waiting until the perfect time to do something. There's no better time than the moment. And a lot of this thing, like this technology thing, like you're experiencing and I'm experiencing, it's not that hard. And that little bit of fear that I've had about going live or doing things virtual have kept, it's kept me from reaching my audience. So I'm, I'm not going to. Audience. Your audience is waiting. <laughs> I thought you said can't live without. Are you kidding me? I, I thought I, you I said so, I would, No, but Barry, I understood it. No, okay. Okay. can't. No, okay. cannot. And that was funny. I was going to make a joke. You said my husband. But no, when you said, I said can't. Like you, no, no, wait. Now I'm confused. COVID brain. I said can you live said without. Can't, I thought you said can or can't. Whatever it is. <laughs> we just I'm saying say what you can live without because you've lived without it and it's fine. Yeah. You answered properly, didn't you? That you don't need to go to New York. You can live without New York? No. Uh, that didn't no. think so. That didn't make sense to me. No, no. We, I just think we realized that our family being spread out like that is, is not okay for us. Like, okay. So I, you, it, I, answered, I answered the opposite, but you knew, you, you kind of knew. You can't right. live without New York. Are you going to go back to New York? We, we think so, yeah. I mean, Quinny has two more years of high school, but I think we just, we realized in this togetherness, yes. we need more togetherness. This is his third startup. I feel really cozy that I could do my work wherever I go now. Well, you're about to prove that tomorrow night. Yeah, but I feel that way, and I feel that way anyway, and a sense of resiliency, and um, I think uh, someone else was saying, like, I, I've been a lot of things, and I... I too went through a divorce and I too was on dating apps and I had a lot of weird illnesses, whatever. Like, I feel like we're all super resilient. And that, that's, that's the thing that I keep hearing from everybody, that there's a resiliency. And I think that that's what we've won yeah. through this. Like, I, I, I hear it in, in everybody and it, it just makes me so proud of strong, strong yeah. women. Yeah. Okay, thanks for clarifying that. Thank you. I really got confused for a second there. No, he's, he's husband number two. We're not living without him. <laughs> okay, and Cheryl, what can you live without? Meaning, it just is like, hey, I, I don't need it anymore. I'm, I'm done. Obligatory events. Yes. I can live without that. Yes. I'm learning yes. to live without that. Yes. So full stop, obligatory yeah. events. Yes. Okay. Obligatory anything. Okay. <laughs> obligatory anything. Oh, Cheryl, okay. that's perfect. Stop shooting on yourself, right? <laughs> stop shooting on myself from your book. Stop shooting on myself. I can. Oh, shooting, up. right? I, I was like, what are you saying, stop <laughs> shooting. Like I yes. should do this. Yes, that's from a radical. Yes. Yeah. No more shooting, everybody. No right. shooting. Um, I will say that Cheryl, you're obviously experiencing what Barry is experiencing because you're with your mom. You know, we're all with our families. Um, I, I know I, I, I should say as a mother, I'm with my, my children. And when you're all under the same roof, there's nothing better. Of course, I can't be under their roof right now and I can't wait to get back uh, to be under the roof. God knows what that house looks like. It's not mine, it's my sister's, I'm a little nervous. Uh, I did take over the groceries and we found a really nice um, family member, my niece's sister-in-law who lives down the street, a college girl who we love is doing our grocery shopping because everyone's been exposed. We can't go to the grocery store. So, um, but family, uh, listen, love wins, right? Love wins. Family is the most important thing. So I cannot live without my family like none of you can but what i can live without and it's been a really really hard year for me on this um gone through a lot of loss and when i say loss i don't mean death um a lot of loss in friends never mm -hmm. happened to me in my life ever ever I've, ne I've never lost a friend but i lost several friends this year over something that was not in my control and i'm gonna get over it because it's caused me too much pain because I love way too much. My light is so strong. I have people who love me from the beginning of time, grade school, before grade school, um, 
new people in my life like you and old people in my life. I mean, the amount of support, God, and get Corona and the people come out for you. <laughs> um, I'm not, I'm not going to apologize for, for that sadness anymore. I'm just going to keep moving through it because I've done everything I can. So that's what I'm going to let go of. Good. Done. Done. Love it. Thank mm. you. Thank you. You guys, thank you for your time. I really, 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 really appreciate all of you. I appreciate you being brave, bold, rebellious, and making this moment in this pandemic meaningful to so many people with your platforms. Barry with uh, Memory Circle, and uh, Emily with Inspired Interiors, and Shelly with Soul Badical, your book, and uh, Cheryl with Grit and Grace, and I am watching that UPS man come up the street every day, Stephanie, for my my red rebellion bag. It's I think it was delivered today. Oh, I'm just so excited. No one's brought it. <laughs> I'm so excited. I'm so excited. I am grateful to all of you. I'm going to now trust that the uh, Metatron, who is the technology god, will take care of this. I will hopefully get this up. You will know. And I am grateful for all of you for blessing me with your time and your presence and your gifts. Keep doing what you love because everyone wins. Love winning.